Hello there my fishy friends, my name is Peter and today I'm going to talk about the fishing closure that was implemented on the Veta River here earlier this week. I think it came into effect Monday which was about four days ago and to tell you the truth I'm pretty angry about the whole thing and um, I think that I have a few thoughts that I want to share with you all. I worry that this video might turn out to be a bit of a rant so if you don't want to listen to that Turn it off now and come back some other time when I'm doing some underwater stuff that you all obviously like. So yeah, the closure here was brought in by the DFO pretty much on short notice with very little consultation with the fishing community or anybody and um, it was the reasons given were observed non-compliance. So, what the heck does observed non-compliance mean? Well, basically it means that there were a lot of people here at the crossing snagging sockeye and uh, they were bringing in foul hooked fish and as far as I understand maybe some of those fish were dragged up on shore which they should never be in the case of sockeye. Uh, people were being bad anglers. They were abusing the fishery and abusing the regulations and abusing the system so really this closure it's a two-month closure too so for two months they're closing one of the busiest spots on the river it was precipitated by the actions of a select group of anglers in this spot and i can't say that the dfo was wrong like i tried fishing here a couple of times last year and i had to walk away like my blood pressure was going way up high because I saw all of this stuff happening. People were setting their hooks randomly throughout their drift. People were slurping their floats at the end of every drift. People were dragging fish up on the shore before checking whether they were a hatchery coho or, you know, it, it just, the list goes on. Uh, there was a whole lot of bad fishing going on here. At the same time, I have to say, I hate that the DFO did this. They used I would say they used the easy way out. Yeah, like I'm 100% in support of protecting the sockeye that are migrating up the river right now. Something needed to be done. But closing the river is completely the wrong move as far as I can tell. A, it's not going to solve the problem. The people that were being bad here, they're just going to go be bad somewhere else on the river. And Yeah, it, it doesn't solve the problem. It's like the police closing a road because some people were observed speeding there. You're not fixing the speeding problem. So <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, the fishing on the Veda River, I've watched it sort of over the years improve and deteriorate and improve and deteriorate. And as, a, as an angling community, I think we really need to take some steps to improve this. Now, I talked about it, well, I chatted online with Rodney Sue a little bit, and he's kind of hinting that, yeah, there's some stuff in the works, but we can't really wait for the government to make these decisions for us. We have to, as an angling community, get better about eliminating the sort of behavior that led to this closure. I think that the DFO did it all wrong. I, I really believe they needed to either enforce or educate people about the regulations. So really what I think they should have done here is set up covert surveillance. A plainclothes person could have easily filmed for an hour, got all their video evidence, then a few people in uniform show up and nobody leaves and everybody that was snagging gets a ticket. I think that's the problem with the enforcement here is the black uniforms show up and everybody, you know, switches to barbless hooks and everybody stops snagging and as soon as the black uniforms leave, it's back to business as usual. Really, I think it needs to be done a little bit more intelligently and when you have speeders, you ticket the speeders, you don't close the highway. So that's my two cents. I think the DFO should have done better. They should have been more intelligent about their enforcement. And um, I think as an angling community, we need to do better. So if you've ever fished with me, you already know I am not shy about telling people to stop snagging. 
So when somebody next to me is ripping their float, I tell them to cut it out. So a few years ago, it used to be if I did that, generally speaking, the person would either stop doing it or they would leave. Uh, what I'm running into now, and already like I've been out, I don't know, five times, and twice already I've had to stop, you know, tell people to stop, to stop deliberately snagging, and um, that's, I don't know, A, it's not my job, but I feel the need to protect this fishery and improve the state of things on this river. So uh, as a community, social pressure, I think, is a, is a way better deterrent than the enforcement, because enforcement, well, you know, if, if you're with the DFO and you're watching this, by the way, I would love a response. I would love to have an interview with somebody like, um, you know, maybe Sean Geddes or you know, somebody up in the DFO. Uh, I, I would love an interview with one of you guys on my channel. And well, if you think I'm small potatoes, well, maybe Rodney Sue would like to have you on his channel to explain the DFO side of things because Really, there's been a lack of communication and a lack of transparency from the DFO about what the expectations are and what rules you expect to enforce and not enforce because uh, really the regulations are not that complicated. Nowhere in the regulations does it say we can't floss. There is no clause or sentence or anything relating to you have to make the fish bite. So technically flossing is legal, but snagging isn't. There, there's, a, there's a strict prohibition against snagging and keeping snagged fish. So why do these people do it? Well, there's this misnomer among a lot of anglers on the vetter that if a fish is hooked in the head, then it's legal to keep. Well, that is not true. The regulations clearly state the fish has to be hooked in the mouth. It doesn't specify whether the cast to go this way or from the outside in. That part is not specified, but it has to be caught in the mouth. And so these snaggers, maybe one in 10 fish that they snag is snagged somewhere on the head or close enough where they can kind of say it was snagged in the head and then keep it anyway. Uh, so that needs to get communicated and it needs to disappear. Like if it, the fish is not caught in the mouth, then it shouldn't be kept. Now, the other weapon that the DFO has in their arsenal is in the regulations, they can say no fishing for sockeye. That forces the angling community to be more selective in their fishing approach. So flossing is non-selective. It targets any fish that's sitting in there, whether it's like to, likes to bite or doesn't. And in this case, well, the sockeye don't really bite very much, very rarely, whereas the Chinooks do. So if you're floating a presentation just above the fish, you're likely to catch mostly Chinooks. If you're flossing, then you are likely to encounter the whole mix of fish that's in there. So, you know, the, there's already a provision in the regulations for that. You can say no fishing for sockeye, that forces the angling community to be selective. They did not use that clause or that option that they have at their disposal and so yeah I think things need to be done better and so let's go back to what the community can do and um, I would say uh, be careful about trying to play fish cop on the river a it's gonna ruin your day and B it can potentially compromise your own safety so um, you wouldn't go up to a bunch of guys in a dark alley do up to no good and confront them right you you would you know call the police well uh, same thing applies on the river you got a bunch of people being bad you don't just walk up to them and start beaking off it it will likely get you tossed in the river or beat up so don't compromise your safety uh, when i talk to people about snagging i am always reasonably polite about it i don't call them names i don't threaten them all i say is hey you know, what you're doing is illegal and uh, we really don't like that sort of thing around here. That, and I leave it at that. I don't, I don't confront anybody. I don't, uh, you know, I leave it at that. Now, if you really want to take it a step further, well, you can try recording them on your phone and um, that a lot of people will, you know, at that point either move or stop doing what they're doing. Um, but yeah. I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, we need to stop tolerating this behavior, but at the same time, don't compromise your own safety in trying to accomplish that goal. So, 
I don't know. That's all I really wanted to say. I've been saying it for years, as has um, Pacific Angler, right? Uh, Matt Sharp says it all the time. If you are foul hooking fish on a regular basis, then you need to, your, your responsibility as an angler is to change your technique, your spot, the way you're fishing. You know, like if you hook two or three fish and they're not hooked in the mouth and you're doing it wrong, it's your own responsibility to change your approach. And yes, flossing leads to a fairly high percentage of foul hooked fish, but so do a lot of other fishing techniques if they're done incorrectly. So if you're floating row and you're setting your hook a lot, even though you aren't getting bites, you're gonna get foul hooked fish. If you're twitching a jig and you're twitching it through the fish rather than above the fish, you're gonna foul hook fish. It's basically any fishing technique you choose if you're doing it wrong, you can get a lot of foul hooked fish and you need to adjust it. So as an angling community, uh, we need to really, I would say if you're a good angler, make an effort to teach other people around you to elevate their game, to be better so that they don't feel like they have to floss to get their fish. And for, as for what I'm gonna do is, it's pretty simple. I've stayed away from the fishing videos so far. I've stuck to snorkeling videos and talking about regulations and this and that. But what you can expect from me in the future a little bit more are videos like how to use a landing net to save the fish from damage, how to prevent eye damage to fish, um, how to snag or foul hook fewer fish in the process of fishing. Um, you know, I, I'm gonna do a bunch of videos along those lines to just try and elevate everybody's game. I'm also gonna tell you a lot about a lot of good fishing tips, honestly, like I've, um, I caught, I don't want to like brag because these are not bragging numbers. There are lots of anglers on the river who are way better than me, but I caught 180 salmon last year, like landed in my net, 180. Not a single one of them was flossed. I probably foul hooked maybe three, maybe four fish. Like it does happen when there are a lot of fish in the river. So it's totally doable. You just have to educate people on how to do it. And I think I'm going to throw my hat in that ring a little bit more. So. You will continue to see snorkeling videos from me, but I'm also going to start doing a little bit more educational stuff to try and improve the level of the game on, on this river so that we don't see what we saw here. The, the fishing closures don't solve anything. So thanks for listening to my rant. If you made it this far, I, I think you're among a select few. I really appreciate you guys as an audience and thanks for watching and see you next time.